now I've got a bit of a different video for you today it's more um, I'm looking at the form factor of this particular construction of a uh, single bi quad element and uh, this is what I've come up with um, to fit on the end of those uh, uh, sky dishes and uh, direct TV dishes that you find in the States in fact uh, those cheap to you know TV dishes that you find all over the world and people utilizing them to get a uh, better Wi-Fi signal or even uh, a better cellular signal and uh, this form factor is made to just fit on the uh, LMB clamp of those dishes it's a standard size uh, this is a, a clamp here and uh, I've made it so it will fit on and you can clamp it down the sides here rather than going to uh, you know the basically gluing it on the end um, or even duct tape I've seen before it just makes a much neater uh, build of it and uh, much more convenient to uh, pop these out and you know possibly upgrade and put a double one on there if you want or even get uh, one of these uh, holders here the LMB holders that uh, have dual mounts and uh, you know possibly uh, have some kind of uh, MIMO going on with the cellular networks now this is uh, a very first uh, prototype I just wanted to get an idea of what it would look like how it would feel so it's just glued on there I, I mean it would be a working prototype but uh, I wanted to make something a little bit more uh, substantial so uh, I'm going to go over the basic construction of this and the things that I've done um, I will talk about the elements a little bit of course and I want to also talk about these two wings here because um, I've got a few questions I mean I have in the past uh, played around with uh, satellite dishes and uh, having uh, these elements constructed in this way um, and the two wings at the side it does work a little bit better than just having a flat um, reflector with a bi-quad um, I don't know why um, to be honest with you it's one of those questions that I like to experiment to try and find out about um, but it does it, it works a little bit better than just having a, a flat bi quad so let's go over the construction of this um, what I've come up with again really simple tools I'm using in here nothing special so uh, hopefully you'll be able to uh, make a few of these yourself so things I'm going to be using then, uh, I've got a piece of aluminium here, it measures 130mm by 75mm, it's 1mm uh, thick aluminium so it's pretty easy to cold bend. Um, I've got a pigtail here, this is the pigtail that we're going to use, it's got an end type per uh, female on the end of here, I've already stripped uh, the coax back as you can see. I've got a piece of uh, brass tubing here, it measures 30mm long that's you know just a, a, a measurement that uh, I've decided to choose it uh, doesn't have any bearing on the frequency of operation of the antenna itself uh, the uh, tubing is uh, four millimeters in diameter and it fits rather nicely over the top there as you can see um, I've also got the uh, elements that I've already uh, marked out and bent and you can see with this one we're going uh, with two separate elements rather than having that bend there and carrying on it's just a lot easier to make this one with uh, the uh, elements cut out like this as you'll see when I uh, come to build it but basically uh, marking these with a little marking tool and bending them I've shown uh, in previous videos really easy way to do it make yourself a measuring tool first and then use that to put your bends in uh, your uh, element there and as you can see on my prototype one I've got a piece of uh, plastic tube in here which again you can use uh, the material for this tubing has no bearing on the uh, operation of the uh, antenna itself but uh, in this one I'm going to use something a little bit more substantial um, I've got a piece of uh, aluminium uh, tube in here this by the way is from an old uh, uh, Hoover uh, vacuum cleaner that I uh, uh, took the uh, wand part of it out and then I've chopped up the tubing and used it in different projects just a way of getting where I get my materials from but uh, we're going to use this instead now I've got my back reflector here and I've marked out uh, lines that are going to help me to construct this basically uh, two crosses from each of the corners uh, to find the center so that's where I'm going to drill the hole there so we can connect to the uh, elements of the bi quad these uh, wings at the sides here I've drawn lines where I'm going to put bends in 
to uh, bend uh, the sides up the measurement that I've chosen for that is just something simple that I've got here um, I've got uh, my ruler here and my ruler measures just under 30 uh, millimeters it's about 28 millimeters in width so I've just used that as a uh, measuring guide to draw the line to put the bend in at the sides you can see I've got the elements laid out here so there's plenty of uh, room uh, you know between those and the sides of the elements uh, some people uh, over on the Facebook group have commented that is it a little bit close and uh, there is no uh, capacitive um, touching going on here it's not touching and it doesn't seem to affect the operation of the elements I mean whether there's something going on there that's maybe helping it a bit over a uh, one that doesn't have these wings I've got no idea but uh, you know something you can experiment with uh, possibly uh, you know to see if there is something going on there because as I said um, having one with these two wings on does seem to work a little bit better than uh, one that has a flat reflector I don't think there's any kind of wave guide going on there although you know these uh, sides could guide uh, waves in uh, somewhat but not um, you know like a, a, a typical wave guide would work but uh, it's just one of those things I don't know why but I just know that uh, it works well but uh, yeah this uh, it's a non-standard uh, measurement I mean you can do 25 millimeters if you want to so you can come and give a little bit more room it's just that you know it's the thickness of my ruler and I like to use something that uh, you know like that just to help me rather than making little measurements uh, to uh, get a precise measurement it's just much easier so the first thing I'm going to do with this then is uh, drill the hole through there and I've got my brass tube in here this is uh, four millimeters in diameter so I just want to make the hole slightly uh, less than four millimeters because I want this to uh, um, have a uh, fitting with friction uh, so it's nice and tight in there because obviously this is aluminium so we can't solder but uh, I'll show you in a minute anyway but I'm also going to add some solder to this tubing because the solder is soft so when it crushes in there it will uh, again give us a little bit more uh, helps to grab hold of it and uh, gives a really good uh, electrical connection as well so now that I've drilled a hole in there, I'm now going to uh, bend the sides up here, the two wings. I'm just going to pop it in a vise and cold bend it. Now here's a close-up. I've uh, prepared the tube here. I've cut out a little notch in the top there, and that's going to be uh, the feed point. And I've also prepared the coax. I've stripped it back here because this tube is going to go over the top of there and be soldered on for the ground at the bottom here. And I've also prepared the coax. Let me... Uh, Let's see if we can get it to focus a little bit better there we go I've also cut out a notch in the top of the coax there so we've got the insulator still on the back of there so it doesn't make contact with this when it's on the uh, going up through the tube there and then uh, we can solder the uh, one end of uh, the uh, element onto this side and the other element onto this side this side is going to be our strongest uh, supporting point and uh, on this side it'll just have enough solder on there to hold it in place and make the connection so I've got uh, this all prepared here as you can see I've uh, soldered up the coax the ground uh, outer braid of the coax to the bottom of the tube in here I've got uh, this prepared at the end here as I showed you also applied some uh, solder in the center part here and uh, ground a bit away as well so it then has a really tight electrical fit to the uh, back reflector so we've got the reflector grounded something else that I'm going to do which I didn't do with the prototype here with the prototype I just glued the plastic tubing onto the back reflector and it's certainly a weak point I mean if you're going to make this for yourself then it's gonna be fine you know that's a weak point so you know not to put any pressure on there but for this one I've made this little uh, puck here using uh, another piece of the tubing as a mould I've made it out of epoxy, drilled a hole through here and uh, that's going to go over the tubing and sit at the back here so it's going to help hold this in place as well with the uh, elements and again 
we're going to glue that there so we've got a nice surface area to glue that in place of the back reflector and then we can put uh, epoxy glue around here we've got much more of a surface area than just the edge of the tubing to uh, hold this in place so it's going to be a much stronger construction now a crucial measurement with uh, this tubing is 15 millimeters we want the uh, elements to be 15 millimeters away from the back reflector as I said I've made many uh, bi-quad videos in the past you're aiming for something between uh, 14 and 16 millimeters so aim for 15 so uh, you'll get the elements right in the sweet spot now I'm getting ready to solder the elements in place I've got to pre-tin the ends here but uh, what I want to show you is um, I've got them lined up as you can see here and uh, if it's uh, not quite lined up with the side here move the back reflector don't try and fiddle around with the elements themselves because uh, we want to solder onto the back of the tube in here and at the front here with the, the center pin on the coax that we've uh, left exposed there so this uh, gives you a little bit of leeway with moving uh, the back reflector and then with the the uh, tubing as well we can also add a little bit of epoxy to uh, hold the tubing in place as well as long as we keep a nice uh, electrical contact with the back reflector it'll be fine So that's the uh, elements uh, soldered in place. I did try to show some of that on camera, but it's really, really difficult. have to turn the lights down in here as well so we don't get reflections off this. But um, I did was a little bit wibbly-wobbly when I was doing it on camera, but uh, I've straightened it out here on the bench. So what I'm going to do now is epoxy uh, this little puck in place down in there. A little bit of uh, super glue in there to super glue this tube to uh, this uh, epoxy puck and that will hold everything in place at the correct height still got a nice electrical connection between the the tubing and this back reflector here and then i'm going to uh, epoxy the tube in place as well so here we are over on the test bench then with uh, the completed feed and you'll have to excuse the mess because i'm doing quite a few different things at once here at the moment but uh, the output on the network analyzer I mean, I've built loads of bi-quads over the years, but I haven't quite seen an output like this one on here. It's, uh, it's unusual. Let me show you. So here it is on the network analyzer there. I'm scanning from uh, 2.15 gigahertz over here all the way up to 3 gigahertz over here. But look at this dip. It's really, really beautiful. and. Of all the bi I mean, we've recently tested a bi quad, single bi quad on this channel, and we didn't get an output like that on the uh, network analyzer. Just look how uh, deep and narrow it is. And I've already tested the VSWR. The VSWR is coming out at 1.21, uh, which is very, very low for a bi quad. But uh, look at its frequency of the operation 2.45 gigahertz there, going up really good 2.3 2.4 and then up back up this way 2.49 gigahertz 2.5 gigahertz its frequency of operation is uh, quite narrow but it's really precise on the uh, Wi-Fi spectrum and I don't know why this looks so unusual I mean the only difference uh, with this one is we've got those two wings at either side of the, the elements themselves. I mean, the orientation of the elements shouldn't make uh, that kind of difference at all to the output on the network analyzer. I can only assume it's those two wings and, you know, a really low VSWR as well. Um, it's interesting, uh, but I don't know why, but it does look really nice on the network analyzer. Now, as you saw on the uh, network analyzer, um, well, you saw something extremely unexpected, just like I did. Um, I didn't include the uh, VSWR because I didn't have the camera on. Uh, I was just doing some uh, tests myself. And, uh, yeah, it's... 
I wasn't going to include the network analyzer in this video because um, particularly this video was just for a form factor only um, it wasn't to show you how to build a bi quad by any means I've done that previously it was just around this form factor to uh, attach it to a satellite dish um, I did post some pictures of this over on uh, the Facebook uh, group uh, antennas and people were asking what um, kind of uh, effect these could have with being so close to the elements themselves whether they could you know being some uh, kind of coupling effect um, but as you saw on the network analyzer um, I've never seen um, a waveform for a uh, bi quad like that before uh, of all the bi quads that I've built um, I kind of thought you know uh, that I knew just about everything there is to know about building bi quads and uh, what they're capable of but uh, it seems like these wings uh, completely changed the waveform. Um, on the recent video I did where uh, we were looking at grounded and ungrounded, that they were just two identical bi-quads on a flat surface. I did put them on the network analyzers as, as well, but I didn't include them in the video. But you don't get a waveform like that. It seems that these wings uh, completely uh, change the characteristics of uh, the bi-quad itself. Um, single biquad works uh, better in the horizontal than it does in the vertical although the numbers are only small and you've got a uh, parabolic dish focusing on this small area here the fact that it's angled like that is not going to make any difference it's not going to make any difference to what you just saw on the network analyzer no matter which way uh, up or around or upside down I put this um, the only thing that I can think of that's similar to this is the, and I'm probably pronouncing it wrong again, just like some of my uh, German subscribers told me I did the first time round, is the uh, Catherine antenna from uh, the German manufacturer um, the, for the cellular networks. I think it was 1800 MHz uh, um, antenna. And they were in a box um, like this. And then you had the element in the middle. I mean... Indeed, I, I thought as soon as I, the first time I saw pictures of those, I thought there was some kind of bi quad, but they're not. But they're in a kind of enclosure box like this, but with sides on here as well. Um, I'm just wondering if uh, you know he did this uh, to a bi quad, put it in uh, some kind of box, completely changes the characteristics of uh, you know the waveform of the bi quad. Um, with it opposed to just being flat, I don't know. I mean, this is why I love. RF stuff so much um, you can never learn everything and uh, sometimes something will come along and surprise you and yeah I think uh, a little bit more experimentation and uh, hopefully answer the question but uh, as to why these sides have that effect I mean uh, that's above my pay grade that's somebody who really focuses on um, RF um, you know the uh, theory side of things and it's probably into the numbers more than what I am the practical side so maybe they'll be able to explain it um, in a bit more detail why you get this effect whether it's a kind of a coupling effect from here I, I don't know but um, yeah it's uh, definitely doesn't affect um, that coupling effect some people thought it might make the VSWR worse it doesn't um, it certainly does seem to make the uh, the waveform from this um, a lot nicer I mean you saw it it was really narrow nice and deep and uh, yeah I'm sure this would work as a uh, fine antenna for 2.4 gigahertz but uh, yeah a little bit more experimentation I think so hopefully uh, you enjoyed this video uh, and that little unexpected twist at the end there uh, if you do have any information if uh, antenna theory is your thing and you can explain uh, why this is then uh, please uh, feel free to comment below or um, join us on uh, the uh, Facebook group Antennas um, sure there's a few people uh, over there who'd find it interesting as well just like I do um, yeah it's uh, it's one of them things that come up now and again in uh, doing this kind of thing or doing this hobby that really surprises me and it's why I love it so much so if you did enjoy the video please give it a uh, thumbs up um, comments or questions drop them below and uh, Hopefully, you'll join me on the next one.